Hey everyone, the Global Surveyor. I'm out here at North Kellyville doing a set out today for a swimming pool. And just want to show you another survey mark here. It's one of these state survey marks again. It's a stainless steel pin plate put in the curb. A bit of yellow paint there. I'm just going to walk over here and look for some survey marks. Yep. Drill hole and wing there. There was a drill hole and wing over here somewhere, but I think it's gone. Not to worry. Surface pits there, look at them. Hydrants, stop valves, all in the. It's not really good for your. Um, for the nature strip, if you want to have a nice lawn out the front there, that's no good. There's a Leica TS16, nice and level, with a tripod down in there. Somewhere up here, there should be two more survey reference marks, which I'm going to use to establish my position for the boundaries. Here we go. Drill hole and wing. Here's another one here. You can see surveyors like to use blue and pink and yellow. I, I would recommend using white paint on the curb and gutter and especially near people's driveways and for the state survey marks I would recommend using yellow paint. So now that we've found the survey marks that we're going to use it's time to set the instrument up and start measuring. So now we're just going to measure to the survey marks on the curb and you might notice that I'm using a bipod to stabilize the prism pole this time. We want to make sure that our measurements are as accurate as possible because we are setting out a swimming pool and the swimming pool happens to be uh, adjoining the house so we, there's no room for error here. Okay now that we've done our restation or resection and we know exactly where we're set up it's time to measure to our secondary station which is a target on a tripod at the back of the site and from there we'll be using that station to mark out the swimming pool which is the purpose of today's survey so I'm just looking at the target now I'm going to press make sure that I change the type of target from a, a Leica 360 degree prism to a Leica round prism and I've done that Now about to press distance. Lock the target. And now we've stored the location of the station. Now we can swap instrument and target and move to the back. Here I've got the like a circular prism on a laser plummet, the SNLL321 laser plummet. See the, the light there, laser. You can see excellent, precise traversing equipment here. So, to save a bit of time, obviously. I've got four pegs to put in and we'll have four stakes to put in. What I like to do is I'm going to just balance the stake between the, the tray lid and the back of the car here and I tie the ribbon on before I leave. It saves me having to put some ribbon in my pocket. Not that it's all that bulky but 
Um, sometimes it's just handy not to carry all this extra stuff. And um, I could use a large sledgehammer, I'll, I'll see, or to make things light, because they're only small pegs, I can use a small lump hammer to hit things in. And I'll show you this, I use the ordinary hammer to put the nails in the peg. But I've also got this groovy hammer holder that I've made out of a piece of PVC pipe. And I've uh, cut two slots in there to put my tool bag belt through on the hammer. Obviously, you've got to do this one-handed. Sits in there quite nicely. There's a free hammer holder idea there for anyone who may want to try that. Um, that's the other thing I wanted to show you. And this is where we are. There's some plans here for today's job. And here's a swimming pool. Just a tiny swimming pool, six and a half meters by 3.25. And it's actually going to be positioned hard up against the back of the house. So that should be quite interesting. There's a the hammer holder in action. So again, all, all surveyors have different methods, but I like to have everything drawn up in the computer before I leave. I can load it in the computer. And you can see here the inside of the pool Point numbers 29, 30, 31, 32. So I'm going to mark them out just roughly with some spray paint on the ground and see where they land. And then I'll decide what type of recoveries I'm going to put in, whether they're two meters or three and a half. And in this instance, I've got some at five and a half, or I might put them somewhere different. I'll just see when I, after I've pegged out the four inside corners of the pool. Okay, so I'm staking out the four corners of the inside of the pool and at the same time I'll place a bit of yellow paint on the ground which marks the corner, the inside water line. Once I've done that, I'll be able to determine exactly where I want to place the recovery pegs. Okay, so I've marked out the four corners with some yellow spray paint. As you can see, heads over here. It's handy to do this because this one happens to land right on the stockpile. So obviously the stockpile is going to have to be moved, but also the pegs that I put in will be over near the fence, I think. And because of the stockpile, 5.5 metres to the water line of the pool, that's the inside face of the pool, that was the sensible distance to, to put these pegs in. You can see I'm using a small mini prism to measure to the objects. And I opted for my large sledgehammer because the ground was quite hard. A few final touches over sprayed the pool line here as best as I can get it. It's sort of running down over there, heading towards the peg. And See, that's the inside of the water line of the pool, and I've got a two meter peg recovery there, and a 3.5 meter peg there. So that's the pool marked out. It's time to pack up and head back to the office. Um, and there's the 5.5 meter pegs that we put in. So thanks so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more videos from the Global Surveyor. Again, there's a, the Leica TS-16 with a groovy camera mount that I, if you're ever wondering how I film these videos. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a great day.